Manhole covers are those metal lids on maintenance holes in roadways. Workers lift them to enter and repair sewers and other underground utilities. Foundries make the covers out of heavy-duty cast iron, so they last for decades and don't budge under passing traffic. This company makes hundreds of models of manhole covers and collars, the rims upon which the covers sit. They come in two types of cast iron alloy, either ductile iron, which has magnesium to reinforce it, or gray iron, which is heavier but just as strong. To make a cover, they first have to make a mold. This one's got the design of the cover's top side carved into it. Workers pour in about 300 kilograms of sand mixed with glue and a hardener. For the underside of the cover, they repeat the step in another mold. A worker creates a channel in the sand mold through which they'll pour the molten metal. He plugs the hole with a wooden block to preserve the cavity beneath. He removes the block and briefly reinserts the pipe to ensure the cavity hasn't caved in. It takes about 15 minutes for the sand mix to harden. A machine then inverts each box and vibrates to shake out the mold. To make one manhole cover, workers will join molds of the top and bottom sections. Alignment lugs and glue between the sections help them align properly and form an airtight seal so molten metal won't leak out. Next, a machine flips the bottom mold, moves the top mold into position below, then mates the pair. The factory buys scrap metal from demolition sites and also recycles its own. It'll melt these metals with certain minerals to enhance the mix. Graphite to make it malleable, silicon to make it stronger, and magnesium to make this batch of ductile iron lightweight yet strong. Here, a giant magnet picks up chunks of recycled iron and steel. The metal is preheated to 420 degrees Celsius, then transferred to a furnace. There, at 1500 degrees Celsius, it takes about a half hour to melt enough metal to make 35 covers. Workers then transfer the molten metal to a cauldron and add more silicon. This evens out the consistency so it's easier to pour. Besides the channel for pouring in the metal, some larger molds have vent holes to evacuate burning gases. It takes about an hour and a half for the metal to harden. A conveyor then drops the molds into a container and breaks them open. Using a hook, they pick up the casting. This one's a collar weighing about 100 kilos. They knock off the remaining bits of sand and excess bits of metal that formed during the casting. These scraps get recycled into a new batch of iron. Manhole covers vary in size according to the specifications ordered. Most are roughly the diameter of a car tire. The average weight, about 63 kilos. A worker now smooths out the edges of the collar and then the perimeter of the cover. This way, it'll sit flush on the collar. This machine tests the strength of the cover by applying pressure. It must withstand the weight of a car on every two and a half centimeter area. They paint the covers and collars by dipping them in a bath of black tar. Once dry, the pieces have a rust-resistant finish that lasts for decades. And the buyers expect them to last, because a manhole cover and collar cost up to $1,400.